In this video, we're going to look at how to apply color styles to your design on Figma. And we're going to be doing so through the project that we've been using for the past couple of videos of the Google homepage. A well-defined color palette is one of the three most important things when it comes to user interface design, besides a good use of typography and a good use of spacing. There is also color. Color is a tricky subject because it's always hard to nail down the perfect color composition for your project. But in this video, we're going to look at a couple of essential color principles that will help you ease in the process of defining the color palette. If there is one thing you should take away from this video is that it should help you differentiate the purpose of every single element of your interface design. If you are building on top of an existing CSS framework like Tailwind or a component library like Chakra, you may want to consider starting off from that framework's built-in color styles. These styles tend to be literal color names followed by a numeric scale that is related to the color's brightness. They are fairly practical for most projects. In fact, they are probably really good candidates in the case of projects where you don't have a clearly or well-defined brand. They are comprehensive and easy to implement. In fact, you will probably have more colors there than you will ever need. And one con to keep in mind though, is that if your product is looking into providing some form of theming functionality, this color system may not work too well with that. The other approach is to give functional and interactive naming to your colors. Functional colors include things like if you have a primary and a secondary color, you may have a background, another color for highlighted area, for borders and dividers, and so on. Interactive colors are related to colors that you apply across the UI to specific states of your components, such as focused or pressed states. Functional color definitions tend to scale better with the UI because you have a clear definition of how each color should be applied. And that generally makes things easier also when it comes to code and implementation. Now that we've covered some of the essentials and principles related to color, let's go a bit hands-on on our Google homepage project to see how we can create those color tokens on Figma and apply them across the UI. In our last video, we looked at breakpoints and responsiveness and auto layout. And this is where we were left off. I've created a new section here called color styles. If you'll highlight any of these layers, you will notice a section here called selection colors, which is a collection of all the colors that are identifiable across this particular layer. And you can see that none of them are connected to a particular color style. So how exactly do we define a color style and how can we apply it to the interface? Well, you see here that I've actually already defined these styles uh, because I had to get the file ready for the video tutorial itself. But I'm just gonna quickly show you one example of how we can define a color style. And then we're just gonna look at how to apply it across all the elements. I'm just gonna pick this one for example because we didn't actually want to create any color styles for the different colors of the Google logo. But just to show you, if I were to actually uh, want to keep this blue, I'm going to hover over this icon here that says style and I'm going to click on it and it's going to give me a list of all the existing color styles that we've already applied to our file. And since I can't see the color that I'm looking for here, I'm going to press here on the plus icon here that says create style. I'm going to click that and it says create new color style. So here in Untel, I'm just going to call this Google Blue. Just to give you an example. So I'm going to create style and now all of a sudden you will see if I look at my color styles here for the entire Figma file, you will see that color blue now appears in my color styles. If you want to edit any of your existing color styles, you can come here to the edit style button and you can click here on the color picker and just to show you how this is paired up, that if I change the color style, you can see that automatically any changes are gonna be applied in color uh, across all the layers that have been paired up 
to that color. If I wanna detach a color style from any of the layers that have that style applied, all I have to do is go to the layer and click here on the detach style. So now that color will be detached. And if I wanna change this token again, then you will notice that now there are no changes being applied to the layer. If you wanna remove one of your existing color styles from the Figma file, then all you have to do is right click on that particular token and click on delete style. And there we go. There's no more Google Blue. So now that we looked at how to create, how to edit and how to remove a color style from your Figma local styles, I'm gonna show you uh, what particular colors we've defined for the Google homepage here. Uh, and these are background, highlight, footer, background, divider, primary, secondary, tertiary, link and icon. So if you think back at the principles that we've talked about earlier, this is a functional color definition uh, of our color system here, where we are associating specific functional and interactive states to our color system names. So now all we have to do is go area by area and start pairing things up to the appropriate functional color. So let's start by coming up here to the, our top left area and we're gonna define these two links here as a secondary color token. And now we're gonna go to the right side and even though the color is slightly different, I've simplified a bit the color system so we can go through these just a little bit faster. I'm gonna press that same secondary color here and for this one, we can decide between secondary or tertiary. Uh, I think we're gonna go with tertiary. Let me double check project, yes. So the reason why we've defined the secondary color for our nav links and the tertiary color for this particular icon here for the apps is due to that order of relevance and hierarchy when it comes to our interface design. We want to actually uh, through color highlight these two links because they are the two more relevant product areas that we want uh, the user to have access to and then the tertiary color is used to provide a third order of relevance uh, for the user to be able to access more apps if need be so now we're going to come back here to the middle and we're going to look at this section here and here we have a stroke so we're going to give that the divider color style. This search icon is gonna be a icon color style. And this microphone icon here, the audio option, we're gonna leave intact in this particular case because it's a combination of the Google uh, colors that we're not gonna define in this particular tutorial. And we're gonna come straight down here to our buttons and we're going to give this a secondary for the text and a highlight for the background. Now this is, you've noticed that I'm actually not going too deep into the layers sometimes because having this selection colors area here is super handy in case, for example, I'm selecting two objects, in this case, the two buttons that are inside the same container and the selection colors section is smart enough to just give me the two colors that are across these two buttons so i don't have to go into each button and define those separately all i have to do is have them both highlighted and then change the color right there so now we can come here to the text link and here we have actually two colors that should actually be the same uh, so I'm gonna get both of them to go into primary. Probably the other color was there because we had maybe like one space uh, that we didn't define in the previous uh, version of this design properly. And then I'm gonna click on the this purple to give it the link, which is this really differentiated purple that's just a little lighter than the primary text in order to get a little bit more attention from the user without being too obvious. And now we're gonna come down here to the footer. And for this one, we can infer that the darker tone here is related to the text. So I'm gonna change that to tertiary because these texts are 
not that relevant when it comes to the interface of the Google homepage. It's very unlikely that someone will actually want to go into these links on most occasions. So they don't deserve that much relevance. And therefore we're giving it, associating it a, a tertiary style. Uh, and then for the background, we can assume that the darker tone here is that of a stroke. So I'm gonna give that the divider style. And then for the background, we're gonna use this specific footer background. Now, this is not the highlight, even though they are fairly similar, we can look at it through the HSL system, which stands for hue, saturation, and lightness. And we can see here that it's 0, 0, 0095. So this has a 95 lightness. And we can look at, in this particular case, the highlight. And this actually has a fairly similar lightness tone, but it's also got a little bit of this um, blue hue and it's slightly saturated uh, tone. So I've decided to keep them separate. And now we could essentially just go through the two other breakpoints and do the exact same uh, color definitions and then we should be good to go when it comes to applying those styles. By the time you are done applying the color styles across the three breakpoints, you should be able to go through each of these and click on the outermost layer and see that when you're looking at the selection colors here, you've got most of these defined and then there's a couple of colors here that are likely to be just related to this Google logo and the microphone that we haven't defined uh, on this particular occasion. But for the most part, everything should be properly applied. And now when developers will come in and execute this design, uh, they can come into any of the layers and hit the inspect and they can see that for a particular text, for example, you've defined a secondary color. So that's going to allow your team and your product to have a more consistent and more well-defined color system that you can apply across all interfaces of your design with those same color tokens. One extra thing that I wanted to include in this video is something I've created in the Figma file uh, right above the breakpoints. It's a section here called colors and it's something that is generally done in order to aid the development of the design through code and it can be helpful for engineering teams to more easily introduce those color styles and for you as well as a designer to keep track of all the styles that you've defined as well as their hex values, which are the values that are then being translated into code and paired to those color tokens. Color is not the only kind of style that you can define and apply in your design on Figma. There is also typography. So we're gonna be looking at that in our next video. I hope that you found this video useful and that it will help you better define colors in your next design project. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are interested in more weekly videos on product design and the skills, the principles, and the practices of how to elevate your design to the next level. Stay tuned. Have a great day.